Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Purpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Are you ready for some fun, primitive thrift flips? I hope so, because we're going to get into it. I recently thrifted this picture frame with the picture in the middle of it from Goodwill for a couple of bucks, three or four dollars, and I want to add a cool primitive picture in it. So I did go ahead and make a picture to put in this, and I will have it free up on Etsy for you to download if you are interested. And I'll show you the whole thing in a, just a little bit. But first I want to get this apart and take a look at this paper because it looks old and I think it's old wallpaper. It's You could feel that it's uh, raised and it's not just a flat paper. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to look it up and see if that's something that I can also add to my Etsy shop for you to download a copy of that. But uh, first I want to paint this picture frame and we're going to paint it black. When I bought this, this is what I envisioned doing, but I wasn't sure what I was going to put in the middle of it, and I came up with something that I think is really cool. So I painted it all over, let it dry, and then I am sanding down the edges to give it a distress aged look because that's the, what I like to do. There you go. Just around the edges, nice, soft, distressing. So I made up this old Crooked River Seed Company um, picture from a kind of on the play off from the screen stencils that I had my friend Tracy and her husband Dan make for me. So I thought I'd make this up because they right now are in the middle of moving and I've had several people ask about having them make some up to sell and I there I wouldn't want to ask them to do that. They're just in the middle of uh, you know, moving. If you've ever moved, you know it's crazy. So I just made this up and printed it off. So I will have it on my Etsy shop for you to uh, download. I'm going to figure out how to do a free download and you guys can do that. So this came, this picture frame came with two pieces of glass instead of a backing on it. So I took one of the pieces of glass and put it onto a board and cut out a backing for it. I took the other piece, cleaned it, and put it into the picture frame. And I took my picture, trimmed it, and then uh, added the backing on there. And I glued it in because there was nothing holding, no, I don't have anything to hold those in. I did, but I am out now. So um, I just used some glue to hold that in. And then I'm just putting a nice backing of the brown paper, rolled paper, on the back to make it look nice and finished and let's see what you think. this cool sign at Goodwill and it looks like a piece of molding that they took and put a little saying on the front of it and I picked it up for a couple dollars. I figured I would just add some black to this little chip that they have here and then I could just sand it a little bit and make it look a little more natural and worn. And then I sanded down the words on the middle as best that I could and I got quite a bit of it done. I took some of this folk art paint and I'm going to, I think this is Picket Fence, and I'm going to do a coat of the Picket Fence over the top in the middle just to make sure that that wording is totally gone. Once that's dry, I add a little bit of Mod Podge to stick some paper that I'm going to use down with it. So I found some more paper from Tim Holtz. This is Botanical, it's called and I am going to unroll it here and show you what it looks like, but it's so pretty. It's just a black and white paper, but sometimes there's just some elegance in that, so I really loved the look of it. You could always put this down and then use some paints or 
I guess, pencils or something to color it in and give it some color and make it look uh, kind of like a painted uh, picture and add color to it. But uh, it's nothing that I want to do. I want to put it in the middle here and stick it down so that I can have a nice piece of home decor to set in with my other decor. So once I got that all stuck down, I added a bit of Mod Podge on the top. Now when I cut this down, I cut it down a little bit big so that I could just go back and trim up what I didn't need around the edges. So I'm just going to take a razor blade and go down the edge there and trim that off. I left a little bit on the ends as well and then I'll just take a piece of sandpaper and in a downward motion just sand that off and it comes off really nice and clean looking. I'm then going to take the sandpaper once I'm done with this and sand down the top just a little bit to dull it down a little, make it a little, a little more aged. It doesn't need too too much but I thought that I would uh, just kind of tame it down just a little bit and so I did that and then I clear sprayed it with some matte clear Rust-Oleum spray paint. It's a flat, if it's a, it's a flat matte sealer. Because I want to take some of my antique wax and go over the uh, picture, but I want to control how much. Sometimes I get very heavy handed with my wax and it doesn't like to come off all that easily because I don't pre-seal it first with something else to make sure it doesn't stick until I'm ready for it to stick. So once I sprayed it with the clear sealer, now I can go over it and wipe back what I don't want and just kind of rub the edges. And it just gives it a little bit of a yellow dark look, not a fully uh, closed in dark. So you can still see the underneath. So I did the top and the bottom and all, all those and then I also did the edges of the paper so that my paper was a little bit aged as well. Now I decided it needed a little bit more so I'm taking a little bit of cornstarch and putting it in my IOD mold that I have. This is called Bird Song and it's just a bunch of different bird forms that you can use your clay in. So I have this DAS clay and I'm going to put it in this little bird mold so that I can put the bird onto my molding piece that I have. So I just work with my clay a little bit. You probably wouldn't have to if, if uh, you had some fresh clay, but this is older clay and it's starting to get hard and I like to work it a little bit and kind of uh, soften it up with the heat of my hands and that seems to work pretty well. So I'm just putting it in the in the mold and then it has a little rim on it or a little edge around the bird that I can take my finger and rub and get the excess clay off. So I went ahead and uh, just got all that done. I did take a roller to it, I don't think I show you here, just to flatten it out and then that cornstarch helps that come right out of that mold really easily. And the detail is just so cool on this little bird. So now I'm going to glue down some Spanish moss to one edge of my little molding and get that all down nicely so that it will stay and not come off. And then I'm, I painted my bird a black color, not fully, There's you can still see the white a little bit. And I'm going to glue that down over the top of the moss just to make it pop a little bit. And this is all that I do. And then I let it dry so that it will be nice and hard. And I like to do it while it's still soft so that I can mold it and shape it the way that I want.
found this Antiques and Primitives canvas at Goodwill for $4, and I picked it up thinking that I was just going to pop it into my booth and sell it the way it is, but I got looking online and I saw one that was in a black frame, and I absolutely loved it in the black frame. I thought it it just brought out all of the beautiful colors even more and it just gave it some more depth so I decided to go down in my stash and see if I had a frame big enough to put it in. Now I found this frame and it worked I think it worked perfectly and all I had to do was take it apart clean it up and give it a paint job of some black paint. Life is a winding road. While it was drying, I cut the canvas off the wooden frame that it was on. It was a very nice sturdy wooden frame, so I'm probably going to hang on to it and I will do something different with it later on. But I just cut it off with a little bit extra around the edges so that it would go in on the frame really well. And then I just trimmed it down so that it looked a little bit neater. And it would fit in the back of the frame a lot better as well. Life is a winding road. I just worked my way around the frame and it had little clips so I was able to uh, set the everything in and just drop those clips down to hold in my picture and my piece of cardboard. So once it was all in I had forgotten that I did not seal it and I wanted to seal it so I took some antique wax and just went over the wood a little bit. I had distressed the wood so I wanted it to bring out the more of a a rich dark brown from the original stain so I just added that wax and it just does a great job of making it look so good. Then I just glued on a piece of the paper for the back so that it would look nice and neat and I also added a hanger because it did not come with a hanger so I added that as well. thrifted this little bucket with a handle. It's a wooden bucket. It does have holiday decor on it, but I decided I would paint it with this uh, chalk craft paint that I got from Michaels. It's a gray, brown gray color, and I gave it two coats to cover up all that um, Halloween decor on the front. Then I dug out, while it was drying, I dug out my chicken wire stamp that I got from Amazon. I'll have links to everything down in the description. Uh, they, I've used this a few times and I really like how it comes out. It looks pretty cool. So I just went over the whole front of this little wooden bucket with the chicken wire stamp and gave it a nice background. I thrifted this chicken mold from Goodwill and I decided that I wanted to do the outside as a mold for my bucket. So I flattened out a piece of my clay so that it was fairly thin but not too too thin and I pushed it down over that chicken mold and it came up with this really cool stamp of it. I really love how it came out. It's got a lot of detail to it and it even has chicken wire in the background. So I just cut it down into a nice circle so it looked a little bit neater at least so that I could put that on the front of my little wooden bucket. Mm -hmm. 
I glued it down with my Gorilla Glue and a little bit of hot glue just so that it would stick and not slide. And I left it overnight to dry so that I could work with it without it kind of disrupting what the actual mold looked like. Once it was dry overnight, I took some antique wax and went over the uh, mold to bring out more of the chicken details. You could see the feathers and the wings, the little eyes and beak. It just made everything pop right out, and I loved how it looked. I also went around the front of the, the bucket as well to give it a little bit of an aged look. Then I took some black paint on a brush, just a little bit, and went around the edges to make that look a little bit aged as well. And then I went over the top of the mold to give it more detail and more dimension. I think it looks great. I painted the side of the sides of, and the handle of the bucket black, let them dry, and then I went over it with a piece of sandpaper to distress the edges. I sealed it with my Rust-Oleum Clear Flat Spray and gave it all gave it a nice good coat all over. I got this wine sign for a couple dollars and I thought it would be great to use just the stand. I will use the sign at some point later on down the road I'm sure, but I wanted the stand for one of my scrap wood crow cutouts that I have. I have a whole stack of them and one of them that's all ready to go on this stand. So all I had to do was take the screws out of the little holder and pull that sign off and set that aside to use at a different time. I went down and got the finished crow that I had that I had not sanded yet but realized that it had a crack in it and instead of scrapping the whole thing or throwing it in the wood stove I decided to see if I could save it without doing that. So I have a little bit left of black paint in this container, just a small amount, and I added some baking soda to it to see if I could thicken that up and just kind of uh, pounce it on to my crow and give it a raised detail so that it would cover up that that crack. I did fix it with a couple of nails on the side so it won't come apart, it will stay, but I didn't want that crack to be showing and I feel like just doing it with the thicker paint and pouncing it on, it really uh, covered that up and made it look cool and I almost want to do it to all my crows now to give them a little bit of dimension and just something different to them. I really like the raised paint. So now I'm just finding a drill bit that is the same size or a little bit bigger than my stand that I want to put my crow on. I have to figure out uh, how I want my little crow to sit on this stand and then I'll drill a little hole in the bottom so that that will slide right in there. So I glued that in and I found this little rusty star that I want to hang from his little beak. So I found another little drill bit that I could fit my wire through and drilled a little hole in my star and in the little beak of my crow. I found a piece of wire and then I'm just going to wire the, uh, or put the wire through his beak and just put a little loop on the back of it so that it won't pull out. And then I'll add the star hanging from his beak on the other side. I think this came out so cute. I really like how it worked and I think I'm going to do more of these like this. I found a piece of homespun material and a little couple little sprigs of pit berries and I took one of the sprigs and I'm going to put that underneath my homespun tie so that I can have that hanging around or down from his neck. So I just took a dowel and twirled those around so that they just kind of get a little kink to them and then I pull them out just a little bit and then I attach that to 
the tie around his neck so that he has something hanging down like little berries. I think this looks so cute and primitive. you enjoyed my primitive projects today these thrift flips are really fun and I love the primitive decor don't forget to check the description below for links to the products that I use today and don't forget to like share and subscribe and check Etsy for the free download of the old Crooked River Seed Company paper have a great day